so much, Joven. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to start off. Um, welcome everyone to Table for One. And uh, I wouldn't take much time to add to the introduction that was given. So let's dive straight in. I'll just share the screen. I have a short video. Hi, sorry to bother you. Are you single? Oh, okay, I'm going to take this chair. Thank you. Did you guys get that? Okay, basically, uh, a guy approached a girl and asked in a restaurant if she's single and just to take away the extra chair. Okay, so we we have all been single before we got married or before we committed, we, so we know the pain. Um, so how many of you felt like that when you saw the invite for this? That lighthouse is cruelly and intentionally targeting you because of your single status. Whatever it is that motivated you to come here, we really appreciate you for showing the courage to show up. Okay, so we really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And Sumit and I have seen and enjoyed all the memes that the lighthouse team has put together. So it's safe for us to assume that, assume what sort of expectations you may be having out of this session. So here's what we've planned. We have a short talk that covers six areas you can focus on when you're still single so that you can be the best versions of yourselves. These, in fact, are the very same things we wish somebody told us when we were single. And after the talk, like he said, that we have a QA and a session as well. So um, are you ready? Type ready in the chat box if you are ready. Since you've been a very responsive lot, though I cannot see a lot of, the, lot of you. <laughs> yeah, I can't see the chat. I'm hoping somebody said ready, so thank you. I want to paint a picture for you. I'm using a lady as an example. It's not gender specific. It can be a man or a lady. Imagine this lady is walking into a plush hotel, dressed to the nines. The waiter at the restaurant who spots her rushes to her to escort her to the seat of her choice. And I bet he's looking over her shoulder to see if there is the other half coming. He's thinking, of course, this is date night. It's Valentine's Day, look at her. And then she says with a confident smile on her face, Table for one, please. What do you think the waiter's reaction is? A little disappointed? This is exactly the attitude you need to develop, the attitude of the lady, to be singles in this world because the world still cannot understand that singles can be happy, confident, and can dress down or up as they please. And let me say this for all the singles out here, 68%. You said, yeah, you deserve to be happy, confident, and be the best versions of yourselves. This is something you have to work on yourselves because your love interest cannot do this for you. Okay, so before you get committed or get married, remember this, that you have to work on yourselves to be happy, to be the best version of yourself. Love will happen when it's time, if it hasn't yet, but you are not going to waste your time waiting for it and whining about it. You're going to focus on yourself. Now, let's go back to the lady. She sits down and she looks through the menu. She goes ahead and orders six things. And these six things are going to be analogies or examples for what we should be ordering out of our single life, right? So first thing she orders is a drink. She really likes virgin mojito. And she asks for that without a second thought. How many of you like fresh lime soda, virgin mojito, whatever? That's my favorite drink, so I put it in there. The thing with the drink that you like is that it calms you, relaxes you into the setting, right? Hydration generally does that. It sets the context for what's to come. You obviously don't gut the whole thing down. You sip on it in the beginning and later on in between the meals. It washes the food down and also refreshes you. It seems like a small but an important part of the whole meal, right? So what is that super simple but important thing in your life, no matter what experiences come your way? The ability to be happy. You may think that it is finding love that will finally make you happy. As a married person for 13 years, actually, it's 13, not 12. I can say that very safely that I am responsible for my happiness. I cannot put that pressure on my husband. So your, your relationship status doesn't give you the ability to be happy. You have to build it within yourself. It starts with being happy with yourself. Real happiness is when you can accept yourself as you are with all the flaws and strengths. Just like the drink, it sets the context for everything, your relationship, your career, your general success in life. 
If you struggle to love yourself, this is something that you can think of. Think of God as love. God loves us as we are. And we can begin to see ourselves the way God sees us. Easy, right? This is how it worked for me, actually. It helped me to believe in my inherent worth. A diamond is a diamond, whether it is in your locker or in the dustbin. The inherent value of a diamond does not change based on where it is. It's the same with you. When you believe in yourself, you start being your own cheerleader. You become less and less dependent on other people's validation and approval of you. It's a beautiful way to live our lives and it refreshes us time and again and gets us ready to face anything that comes our way. So self-acceptance, self-love, self-belief, all of this combined together will give you the ability to be happy. So let's see what she orders next. Over to you, Sumit. Yes, am I audible? Yes, yeah. Yeah, now that she's ordered the drink, it's time to order the next thing. That is the appetizer or the starter. This is your appetizer. Don't fall for the pressure to settle down. You know, who all are drooling right now just thinking about some of the starters? You can run a ship in my mouth for sure. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but my favorite veg starter is paneer tikka, actually any paneer dish, and non-veg dish chicken 65, super young. Anyways, when, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I remember getting this piece of advice from a family member. This is what they said. They said, Subin, when you go to a restaurant and spend money to eat, especially if it is a buffet, make sure you make the most of it. And the way to do that is to overeat the appetizers. You know, I took that advice so seriously and every buffet I went to, I overate the starters to a point where the starters became my starting and ending. Eventually, as I got older, sense dawned on me and I realized how oily and calories most of these appetizers are. And I end up, and, and I end up missing out on the rest of the meal, that is the main course and dessert. There was really no need for me to settle just for the appetizers. And appetizers are just built, meant to build your appetite for the meat. You know, in, in our life, especially in your 20s, there is this pressure to settle down at the earliest. The pressure could be from your family or friends or from the society in general. You know, the idea is that they'll say, boss, at the earliest, settle down. By settling down, what they mean is get a job, buy a car, buy a house, get married, have two kids, buy another house and so on. Once you settle down, you've made it. I want to suggest to all of you to not settle down because of the pressure from the outside. Settle down only on your own terms. In fact, I would say this is the age to not settle down, but rather to take risks. Explore, try out different things that you're curious and passionate about. Try, fail, learn, try again. If not now, when? You know, the learnings and growth you will experience as a result of this process will be huge. Don't fall for the pressure of settling down. Take risks. That is your appetizer. Let's see what she orders next. Sarah. Yeah, she has the drink, she has the appetizer. We move on to the main course. And she ends up ordering six, uh, three dishes for the main course. And think of those three things as important things that you do. Now that you believe in yourself and you're clear that you don't have to be pressurized by anyone to settle down before you're ready, right? The first thing is what I will cover, and that is freedom from the past. You know, with ourselves and that is both of us and with every single person we've coached, this is a common struggle. Unless we are not defined by our past, we cannot have meaningful relationships or life. So settling with our past means to let go of your regrets and your uh, guilt or whatever that is that keeps you stuck in the present because you're thinking about the past. It takes some focused work to break free of the past. And let me explain this in simple terms. As we go through in life, our brain gets coded. Some codes are positive, some are negative. Say you have a bad experience and that was sort of life defining. That leads, to, leads you to a certain belief. Beliefs over time become a coding in your brain. It is possible to break the coding by identifying them and it takes some work, like I said. But here's a quick tip. Look for patterns in your responses to things. For example, if you've had a bad breakup and you processed it this way, that men are not trustworthy. You may become coded that way and you can see a pattern of your being unable to trust any man, even though they are different from the man who broke your trust. So once you identify a pattern, you have to ask yourself, will this serve me if I hold on to this belief? 
the obvious answer if it is a negative one is that no it will not serve me number two what will be a benef beneficial thing to believe instead of this negative thing so find out something that you can believe that is beneficial to you you can't go back in life and change anything but you can change what and how you think about it right now so freedom from regrets and guilt of the past is super important over to you Sivan. All right, the second item on the main course, remember it's a three part main course. So the second item on the main course that you should be ordering is this focus on learning. If you have to ask me what is the most important skill you will need to succeed, it is this, the skill of learning anything. You know, if you develop this skill and the appetite to continuously learn, you'll be leap years ahead of your peers. You know, the world we are in right now is changing at such a pace that the only way you can stay relevant is by upgrading yourself constantly. And that happens through learning. And those who do that will stand out. Have a posture of a student. Be curious about everything. The good news is that learning doesn't have to be expensive. There is no, really no excuse for not learning. You really don't need to go physically to a fancy place, take some loans, pay insane money to learn anything. Today, even just for a cost of a meal, you can buy the best of books, enroll for the best of courses. I mean, who would have thought even a few years back that sitting at home from, uh, from our mobiles, we can access the best of content, have access to the best of coaches, educators. It's unbelievable. Make the most of it. If you have the appetite, you will learn anything. You know, just the other day, I came across the story of a railway coolie from Kerala, Srinath. He cracked the civil services and is now on his way to become an IAS officer. He didn't go to any coaching institute or college. He did that just from his mobile with the free Wi-Fi from the railway station. Unbelievable. Make learning a priority, guys. Sometimes we can get caught up, uh, you know, in the problem of plenty. There is so much out there, so much to learn, so much to explore that sometimes it paralyzes us from doing anything. So here is what I suggest. I suggest that we have learning goals. Ask yourself as many questions as possible. Like, you know, okay, what is it that I want to learn? What is the outcome I want when I finish that? How much time will I need to finish, to reach that outcome? Where can, get, where can I get access to the best content in that, that area? Once you make a plan, have a learning goal, put it on paper, more likely than not, you will do it. So your second course meal is this, make learning your focus. And the third one is be visible. What do I mean by that? You know, it's nice if people just magically came to know about your existence and came to you to romance you, but it doesn't really happen, right? So you need to make yourself visible. People need to know that you exist. Even Cinderella had to go to a ball. So you have to choose your kind of ball. I'll give you some examples. Do your job or your studies very well. That gives you visibility in the school, in, in the college, or in the, in, the off, in the workplace, wherever. You get awards, people get to know there is this intelligent, smart girl or boy. Take up your hobbies properly and connect with like-minded people. Suppose you like painting or singing or whatever and connect with communities on social media or otherwise and get to know and grow your network, right? Take up leadership roles in college or in office. And now you're thinking, but I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert. I don't connect to people, but I want to tell you that all of us have the inherent ability to connect to somebody. So it doesn't matter how big your circle is, but find your circle. Now, if you want to be on dating apps, please go ahead and do that. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who think good marriages don't come out of matrimonial sites and they outsource that to their uncles and relatives and then later blame the whole thing, whole system saying, oh, nothing is working out. If you really are ready to settle down, keep your options open. Go to the matrimonial site, put up your profile, write your own introduction, put your own pictures and stuff like that and do not outsource these things, right? Be intentional, be open. Go to parties, get togethers, get to know people, basically, right? You never know which social relationship is going to bring the right person to you. Be open. It all goes back to our first point, which is self-love and self-belief and the ability to be happy, have that. Then put yourself out there, let the world see you. You don't have to be desperate for a relationship. That doesn't bring anything good out of it. Be yourself and keep showing up as better versions of yourself on as many avenues as possible. So that's all I wanted to share as a main course and the main course is over. We have three points. Do you, do, do you guys remember? The first one is to 
break free from the past. The second one is to continuously learn. And the third one is to be visible. Okay. All right. You don't want to end the meal without ordering the dessert. Yeah. So here's the dessert you can order. Don't go for instant gratification. You know, for those of us who have a sweet tooth, we understand the pleasure in just experiencing the dessert spread, especially in the buffet. At that moment, it is bliss. But uh, as the saying goes, a moment on your lips, forever on your hips. Yeah, we live in an age where instant gratification is the norm. Many years back, if you remember, we had to wait in long lines to buy train tickets, groceries, movie tickets, even to get a reservation at a restaurant. Today, thanks to technology and innovation, you can get all those stuff like this. And so our minds are wired to get everything now. It's like, I need it now. Any delay makes us impatient. Now, I know there are a lot of young folks watching this. And if you're in your 20s or early 30s, I want to suggest that you delay gratification. You know, you know, in our 20s, both of us, we lived mindlessly. When it came to food, for example, we ate for that moment. Ate as if there is no tomorrow. Abused our bodies. It may not matter then, but the results of choices made then show up much later. And then you're left with nothing but regret and a lot of work that needs to be done to repair the damage. So you guys don't need to go down that road. Make wise choices today. When it comes to your health, it's perfectly okay to let go of that treat. It's perfectly okay to sweat it out in the gym. Short-term pain, but my goodness, long-term gain. The same with your relationships and love life. You don't need to commit yourself emotionally or physically completely and get that instant gratification rush. There is wisdom in taking it slow, being patient. When it comes to your money, it's okay to live below your means. No one expects you to be filthy rich in this decade. You really don't need to fall for that pressure and instant gratification by buying that you know, expensive phone to look good or taking loans to buy a bike, house, car. Delay it as much as you can. Instead, use that money to save and invest into your future. Invest into assets, like invest into yourself, your personal growth. Invest into assets like stocks or mutual funds, real estate, something. Assets will eventually give you wealth. Maybe it's only 500 rupees that you're saving and investing every month. But the wonder of compounding will work on any asset. And when you do this consistently over a period of time, by the time you're in your 40s, you would have created so much wealth that you would be set for life. It's absolutely okay to delay gratification for the sake of your future. Remember, for dessert, delay gratification for your future good. All right, the table for one is set. Here's a quick recap of what we believe is a great meal for you to order. All right, for the welcome drink, remember, it's something that refreshes you. It acts, it's a, the ability to be happy. And uh, when it comes to the appetizers, remember, don't be under the pressure to settle down. Settle down on your own terms but take risks. And the three-part main course, the first one is to have the freedom from your past. The second one is to focus on learning. And the third one is to be visible. And finally, for the dessert, don't go for instant gratification, but delay and be patient. And your future self will be proud of you and grateful to you for this choice you've made. Okay. I was not able to unmute myself. So um, if anybody wants to take a screenshot of this, you can. Can you still see the screen? No, we can't. Can you please share? Or we'll put it up in the... Yeah, basically I have just one uh, activity. The thing is, uh, so we're closing with this. Uh, the thing is that this is the summary since we didn't have a PPT, just take a screenshot of this or whatever, or take a picture. I'll share it in some time. Uh, basically, look at all these points and uh, look uh, and rate your life on a scale of one to ten, and see where you are actually low, and start working in on that one area. And why are we insisting on this? Is because when you learn something in the next twenty four hours, if you take action, the learning actually stays with you. Otherwise, it's just another talk, and you just you know for, you will forget it in the next two days. So before it goes away from your mind, since you've put in so much time listening to us, look at all these points, just six points and rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 and see where you're not doing well and pick one area and work on it for the next one month or three months. It's left to you. I'll just share it once more. That's it. Thank you so much. You've been such a fantastic audience.